All righty. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Sage Pacheco. I am the Marketing and Customer Experience Specialist here at WiseCon Engineering. Thank you so much for attending our closed loop integration webinar combo with Fitech. Uh, we work very closely with Fitech through our integration. We've seen our growers have a lot of success while utilizing both of our services. So we wanted to kind of showcase them and what they do and how well they do it. So today, our guest, we have Joseph Jackson. He is the Customer Success Manager with Fitech. We're going to hear from him shortly. Um, he will go over what Fitech does, some of their success that they've had throughout the integration as well. There will be a brief Q&A after the webinar. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please just drop them in the Q&A box there at the bottom. Um, if you have any trouble with sound or our screen sharing, please also let us know in the Q&A box as well. That would be very much appreciated. And if you have any questions, I will also share mine and uh, Joseph's information in the chat box at the end so that you have our contacts to contact us with any questions after the webinar. All right, so to start off here, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about WiseCon if you don't, aren't familiar with what we do. So starting off with the WiseCon, uh, we were founded in 2006. We have been in California since 2015. WiseCon is a high-tech irrigation management company. Um, we are a Chilean-based company, so we are serving over 300,000 acres with over 10,000 nodes actively deployed throughout North and South America. In California alone, we have 15 distributors and dealers. Uh, we have 20 throughout the United States combined. So we have distributors throughout California, Pacific Northwest, and Southeast United States, so all over. We have over 2,000 users in over five countries, so Argentina, Chile, US, Peru, and Mexico. We have a fully staffed support team and warehouse in the United States as well as in Chile. And we have seven API integrators, so Phytech being one of them who we're focusing on today. We also have an open API so that we can connect with other companies and share data to better analyze and support the growers' needs. So we can throw data onto other platforms if they have an open API as well and vice versa. Here's a quick snapshot of all of our active ranches throughout just the North America alone and into Mexico. So what is drop control? We are an online irrigation management system. We consider ourselves the remote control of your operation. So you're able to uh, monitor and control your operation all from a mobile device, such as a remote control. Drop control is a reliable irrigation monitoring and control system. So we pride ourselves on being the forefront of the automation industry. Um, automated irrigation is what we specialize in. It's our bread and butter. However, we also have our hand in many other telemetry aspects as well. Uh, the first feature of our control system is going to be pump, start, and stop, as well as wireless valve control, opening and closing of those valves, sequential valve operation, per variety irrigation, you name it. We also focus on weather analysis through the use of our weather stations. So we distribute weather Davis, or Davis weather stations here, but we can also read data directly uh, through that hardware, or we can utilize an API if you already have an existing weather station, we can tie into it and retrieve their information onto your drop control platform. We do a lot of soil moisture monitoring. So we are sensor agnostic, meaning that we have an open protocol. Um, so if you have a sensor in the field that also has an open protocol, we can retrieve that data from them as well. It doesn't have to be um, the sensors that we sell you. If they have an open API, we can retrieve their data onto your drop control platform for you to view. And of course we offer remote um, full capabilities. So all from your phone, desktop, iPad, whatever you have, you can turn on and off your pump, schedule irrigations, monitor your soil moisture, look at your weather reports, forecasts, you name it, all from your mobile device. So we are comprised of hardware and software. Getting into our hardware we have at WiseCon, Right there in the middle are X1 nodes. So that's gonna be our flagship node. Um, it has full monitoring and control capabilities all within one node. On the right-hand side, we have our M1. So this is our sole monitoring node. It monitors soil moisture probes, weather stations, any other sensors that you have that can monitor. 
It can operate as its own radio unit. Drop control uses a 900 megahertz frequency that all the nodes talk to each other on. So that information then goes to the cloud. So essentially that M1 node can either be a cellular gateway in itself or a radio module for the gateway that could either be the X1 or the C1. So finally going into our C1 node, this is our pump and filter station control node. The C1 can stop five different pumps and 10 different valves. So stop and start five pumps, 10 valves, all within one node, as well as utilize uh, fertil fertilizer pumps and acid injections using the C1. Moving into our software. So as mentioned before, you can control and manage everything from a mobile device or computer. So if you're scheduling an irrigation, you would do so on your device. It all goes through Amazon Web Services to the WiseCon server. Then it all goes to the gateway. Then those commands get sent to the radio nodes in the field. So those are the few steps. This can be done through a third party platform as well, such as Phytech. So you can schedule through another company's platform and our hardware will then execute it out in the field. So such as Phytech implementing recommendations, our hardware would then execute that action once it's approved. And as mentioned before, we can also share data with other companies through our open API. This is a snapshot of our desktop version of drop control that you would use to schedule and monitor your operation. And we also have a full mobile app. So available for Apple and Android on the App Store. The app, you can do absolutely everything you can do on the desktop. The app is easy if you're driving from ranch to ranch. If you're just at home and you need to turn on a pump really quick, you can do so on the app. It's very user friendly. Here is something similar to what you would see if you were viewing your account through Drop Control on the desktop. So when you configure your drop control ranch, um, a map is created using a KMZ file on Google Earth, and that's coordinated exactly to your specific ranch. We then place the location of each node on the map with all the information and sensors that are configured to each node. So any soil moisture sensors, weather stations, anything like that is configured to each node, and you can see the exact location. You're also able to see the status of each node and sensors, so such as charging status if it's not getting enough charging through the solar panel or its signal, et cetera. You can see everything on just your account dashboard here. If you were to enter through your irrigation scheduling tab, you can see some basic functions such as stop and activate an irrigation. So you're able to stop a running irrigation at any time if you need to go out and fix something, something doesn't seem right, and then you can activate it and pick right back up where it left off. You're able to uh, have four modes of irrigation scheduling. So up at the top, we have zone irrigation, immediate group of zones, and then programs and templates. So you have the option of scheduling one zone at a time, scheduling to start immediately or group zones together. But with grouping zones together, you can also set a volume and duration independently for each zone. Templates of programs are useful when you want to run a set for a duration of time, such as a full week, two weeks, every other day, whatever you prefer, without having to set a schedule at the beginning of each day or the beginning of each week. You can just set a program and template to run for however long you'd like, stop it whenever you'd like. And we'll get into programs and templates here in a bit. So as mentioned before, we specialize in automated irrigation, specifically in scheduling. So there are three ways to control how much or how long an irrigation will run, and that is end date and time, volume, or duration. So once you set your customized irrigation tactic, drop control will then calculate the volume of water being put on, as well as the end date and time of when it will stop. You can also schedule acid and fertilizer injections if you have that available on your ranch, and you can add that in at any time. Going more into those programs and templates. So this is showing you what would happen in a specific day. So we start with our template that's setting up your day or multiple days, maybe a week. And then you would then apply that template into a program and set the amount of time you want that program to run. We also offer percent modifiers so you can increase or decrease the percent of water you wanna put on. And that would then expand or decrease the amount of time you would irrigate. You can skip days on your irrigation. So if you want to, run a want, want to run every other day, every two days, 
And then you can also activate and deactivate a program and template whenever you would like. This is what irrigation scheduling would look like on your app. It's very user friendly, very simple. When using the irrigation scheduling tab, you can view your scheduled and executed irrigation throughout a 24 hour period of time on your Gantt chart here. So at the top, you can see your scheduled irrigations in that darker blue color. And then at the bottom, just below that, you're able to see what actually happened. So the operational feedback, if we were on the desktop, we could run our cursor over it and it's gonna tell us everything that happened during that irrigation, how much water was put on, our pressure, everything you need to know. We can also see a weekly view. So Monday through Sunday, you can see every single irrigation that is scheduled or every irrigation that happened or both. In this top right hand corner, you can select scheduled irrigation and it will export a printable version of this. So you can send it off to anyone on your operation or pin it up in the office, whatever you need to do. You can see everything that's going to happen in a given week. Operational feedback. So like I was saying before, you can view everything that actually happened during that real irrigation. It also gives you volume difference, calculating your actual volume versus your theoretical. So this is helpful when knowing if you're having pump or pressure issues. Manual operation is also available to see on your scheduler. So anytime you manually go open a valve or turn on and off a pump, you're also able to see it in that gold color on your Gantt chart. So it won't only show you what is scheduled on drop control, but also what is manually done out in the field. And it will also show you the volume that's put on and the duration of time just based on your sensors out there. Peak hour mode is incredibly helpful during these times, especially um, you can always go in and customize your peak hour mode. We are experiencing changing peak hours, so you can always go edit those. And the cool thing about drop control is that when you are scheduling an irrigation and you are going to interfere with your customized peak hours, it will send you an alert before you send that schedule. Hey, you're going to impose with peak hours. Would you like to continue or would you like to change your uh, time? So as you can see here, an irrigation was scheduled to stop right before peak hour, and then they scheduled one right when peak hour ended. So you have the option to never interfere with those peak hours. Here is another weekly view, but this is gonna be from an API standpoint. So this is gonna be relevant to what we're talking about today with Phytech. So how this works for a grower is that they would receive a recommendation proposal like from a company such as Phytech. Um, Phytech would accumulate this data from historical data or analytics. Um, they would then give you a recommendation of duration or volume that you should be irrigating. And then they also use plant sensors to accumulate this data as well. So this is what a direct recommendation proposal would look like on your drop control account. Some things to keep in mind regarding the API is that we are bi-directional. So we're able to display our data on schedulers on other companies' platforms as well as vice versa. They can throw their data on ours as well, as you're seeing here on the screen. And this is also where closing that loop comes into play. So this is what sets our two companies apart is using our open API to inter integrate directly. Usually there's a gap between the recommendation and the actual execution in the field. So WiseCon and Phytech worked very closely to close that gap, making it a true closed loop uh, integration. WiseCon has seven API integrators. So we're very experienced with the process of working with a third party company such as Phytech in order to implement the recommendations. That open API just makes it that much easier on the grower when it comes to scheduling and executing. So this is going to be a proposed recommendation that a grower would see on their drop control account. And this is gonna be what a confirmed recommendation would look like. So when the recommendation is confirmed by the grower, you can see in that pink color there on your Gantt chart, um, this is what they would see. So before it was just a recommendation or proposal, and now it's being confirmed and ready to execute out there in the field. We offer two sets of approval, so mass approval. You can approve every single recommendation, irrigation event that they recommended or you can approve um, single approval. So you can select the exact irrigation events you want to do one by one.
Continuing on with some more features of drop control. So when we get into flow meter readings, uh, we're able to see accumulated volume from a set time frame, such as throughout a season, as well as cross-referencing that uh, with flow readings. And in this example, we have a weekly accumulated volume and reading a flow meter as well. Here we are seeing custom charts, another feature on drop control being used to read uh, three different pumps over a two week span. Um, if we were on drop control, you'd be able to hover over each of these tracks in order to see the exact PSI, the flushing, any spikes in pressure, anything like that. You can use custom charts uh, to view as many pumps or um, variables as you would like on your ranch. Soil moisture monitoring is a tool that we use greatly as well. Um, as mentioned before, we use soil moisture probes with sensors anywhere from four to 60 inches in depth within your soil. These sensors collect soil moisture readings that are then shown on your drop control soil moisture analysis tab. And you're then able to view moisture readings compared to irrigations that were ran, rainfall and ET as you can see there on the bottom. And then the middle there is adding all of the soil moisture uh, numbers from the three depths that we're reading at the top. So that middle chart's basically just used for trends. So it's adding all of your moisture and you can be able to see the trends from when you run irrigation, um, what the plants are drinking, and then when the moisture uh, goes away. Our weather analysis tab allows you to view temperature and humidity as well as rainfall and ET. Um, our weather analysis now includes a in-depth five-day forecast showing as well as current readings or wind speed direction, hourly and daily rainfall, and temperature lows and highs for the week. We just implemented a service called Weather Tools, so that offers a downloadable report every week, providing you with a 10-day forecast of your area, including all those readings I just mentioned, as well as spring recommendations for the week, which is pretty interesting. So that's a new service we have available on Drop Control as well. Frost protection is another tool that we offer. Uh, you can set a minimum temperature to alert you when you're going to be entering a frost event. So in those colder months, the highest temperature when you start to enter a frost event is about 32 degrees. So you can set that as your minimum and drop control when analyzing weather. And you can also set an alert to uh, notify you when those temperatures are dropping. And then you can also set an alarm, which we offer through support. You can contact support for you and have them set up an event to occur, such as an irrigation event, when you enter into those, uh, those frost temperatures. You have the ability to set chill hours. This is showing us accumulated chill hours from November to May. These are all customizable. This is what the weather and soil moisture analysis would look like on your app. Alrighty, as I was mentioning before, those alarms and alerts are very useful. Alerts can be set up um, by the grower on drop control, super simple. Um, when temperatures are surpassing their thresholds or when your pressure has spiked or dropped, um, you can set those up yourself on drop control. And then alarms can be set up for you uh, using our support team and that will execute an action to happening such as stopping and starting an irrigation automatically. These are some snapshots of some notifications you may receive from the app. So when the irrigation starts or ends, you can see the active irrigation happening. And then you can also view your overview map when your blocks are dry or when um, your weather station is setting off an alarm. So ROI, yield increase in this case was very significant. This testimonial featuring Tom Rogers is one of uh, ours on our YouTube channel. It's one of our many success stories. Tom lost a well in the beginning of summer and still saw a five to 10% increase in yield and 30% in water savings just while using drop control. So it's one of our bigger success stories. And getting into the process of that closed loop integration with companies such as Vitech. So this graphic kind of gives you a better understanding of the interaction between us as well as our dealers, distributors, and third-party integrators. So we have our client or grower working with WiseCon for support or service. 
Then we have our dealer or distributor for installation. And lastly, we have Phytech. So that third party company as an integrator working directly with the grower as well as directly with WiseCon. As mentioned before, our companies are closing the gap between integrations, making this the most seamless process possible for our growers. Here's a quick overview of an operation that WiseCon and Phytech kind of work together on. So this ranch was in Bakersfield. It was about 175 acres of almonds. They wanted to see the difference after implementing the recommendations from Phytech and how simply the execution would be using drop control and automation. So some of the projects, product details were they had one pump, one BFD, 10 field valves, single line drip and fan jets with 22 PSI threshold. They were irrigating based off of historical ETO data and a soil moisture probe out in the field. On the left-hand side, we can view our before and after. So the left-hand side is showing us the first leaf results back in 2017. They were using no automation, no recommendations, no telemetry, just hand irrigating. They were putting on 33 inches of water and seeing 27 to 28 millimeters in growth. Then on the right-hand side, you can see those results after implementing Phytex recommendations and implementing automation. So they were putting on 20 total inches, which is significantly less than before, but they were seeing the same exact growth. So in retrospect, it definitely worked out for them adding in those recommendations and automation as well as telemetry. They were seeing the same growth and using way less water. Uh, they found at the end of the season, they saved one acre foot of water per acre. So coming out to approximately 25 million US gallons of water saved. So pretty significant uh, case study we saw here using both of our companies. Here we have some of the other companies that we are fully integrated with that we can work with for you. Um, we, like I said, we have an open API, open protocol. So if you have a company that also does that you would like us to work with, we can always explore those options. We try to make it very seamless, very easy for the grower. All right, well, that is all I have for the WiseCon side. Thank you so much. I am now going to hand it over to Joseph and he's going to tell us a little more about WiseCon and what they're doing over there. All right, can you see me, Sage? Correct, I can. Ah, awesome, hello everyone. Um, as Sage was saying, my name is Joseph Jackson. I am one of the customer success managers with Phytech and I'm going to be walking you through a little bit about what we do and what we do in combination with WiseCon. So yeah, put up my own slide. All right, at Phytech, we believe in the philosophy of plant-based farming. Your trees can talk, now you can listen. We are in the business of irrigation management and optimization through getting data directly from the plants. So we're giving you visibility on the crop that is very different than the standard visibility typically used in the industry based often on uh, extraneous factors being how wet or dry your soil is, how hot or cold the temperature is. We're trying to cut through that noise and go straight to the most important thing on any one of your farms. And that's the plant, whether that's a row crop, whether that's a tree. And if it's a tree, if there's fruit on that tree, cutting straight through to those, helping giving you information directly from them. And then you can take that information and use it to make really well-informed irrigation management decisions. And more often than not, the typical irrigation management advice I give growers so, so often after looking at Phytech data with them is they need to be irrigating in shorter sets and they need to be irrigating those shorter sets more often. And that is where our integration with WiseCon really comes in because you're then able to take those uh, recommendations to the next level. We really believe that plant-based farming is the way in which you can most optimize your practices because you're going to be able to base the demand 
You're going to be able to base what you're putting on directly off of the demand you're seeing from your crop. So whether in that great example, Sage was saying at the end, those first leaf trees actually needed a lot less water. That was what Phytech was showing the grower, and they were then able to make those reductions without seeing any loss in growth. That's exactly what we think all growers should be doing, whether it is a reduction in water. In some instances, it might be a slight increase in water, but the goal being you are optimizing what you are doing to be the most efficient because now you're basing your practices off of what the tree is telling you. This is really in contrast to the somewhat uh, older school management solutions that were based on guessing based on more generic data and had the opportunity to be over what the tree needed or under what the tree needed. The problem being you weren't sure as the grower. You really only had one time of year when you were harvesting that crop to really know that that was the right decision, that was the wrong decision. Now, Phytech is giving you information directly from your plants. And it's not just giving you information directly from the plants you're also getting that data every single day. You get a new value, a new what we call plant status so that you can know how your crops are feeling with so many more data points than you ever had the ability to look at in the future. Uh, now, normally I would go from here straight into uh, talking about a lot of the hardware in the system kind of behind the scenes uh, that makes Phytech tick, that grabs your crop data and provides it to you. Um, but we're going to mix things up a little bit today because we're having this in collaboration um, with WiseCon. And we're going to talk about automation first. We're going to go and look at the integration, the planner app uh, inside Phytech that allows you to make those schedules with drop control and truly take advantage of the recommendations we're giving you at a way that would normally be utterly impossible without an automation system attached to it. It truly is the next step in irrigation management and irrigation control. The more information we look at at Phytech, more often we're seeing so many crops benefit from shorter, more frequent sets, sometimes multiple irrigation sets inside the same day, a practice that under traditional farm uh, management would have just been unheard of. But now with an automation system, it's not just, it's going from being unheard of to being common practice. And let's look at the interface then uh, that we at Phytech have put together to make that possible. Um, we've spent a lot of time building a user interface that was very, very understandable, succinct, and user-friendly so that you can go in very quickly, see your blocks, and then make the changes on those blocks very simply. You can see here, we have an example from this planner page. We're going to look at a few different things on this page specifically. First, you're going to notice there are little cross-hatch irrigation or little blocks. Those are planned irrigation events inside Phytech. So you would have gone in and you would have scheduled. And then the darker blue is an actual event. And you probably can very quickly see that this grower does not have automation because their actual events and their planned events are similar, but they're still pretty different. You might be missing it by four, six hours between when you were intending to actually start your irrigation and when you actually really got that irrigation applied. That is where automation systems like WiseCon really come into the gap and be, give you the ability to capture that information. Right here on the planner page is where you would begin setting up that integration along with talking with a customer success manager like myself, as well as in conversations with WiseCon, we would build the integration. So anything you put on here would immediately transfer over to drop control very quickly and very easily. Over here on the far right, this is where you can actually see both your plan for this week, but also the Phytech recommendation based specifically off the kind of crop you are growing. With a goal based in hours, inches, and percent of ET that shows you what we estimate the crop needs to be able to perform its very best uh, that week. Now, this is a really important number, but in a little bit, I'm gonna talk about the plant status color coming from your direct tree data. You'll see that as the little green lines running across the stream. 
those colors are produced by the data coming directly off the trees and they form the basis of what you can do, giving you extra insight to know like generally you should apply this much water, but specifically you, this block is not the average block. It needs less, it needs more. You now can know that with Vitech. This little simple pop-up box that you see here is what would give you the ability to plan that irrigation event. You can select your start time, you can select your duration, and then other different options in there. Fertile, if you're doing a fertigation, if this irrigation is going to be a repeat one multiple days throughout the week, all information you can put into here. Um, now, I'm sure just like they would say over at Wisecon, we're only touching on a small bit of what this planner can do. We have developed it with tons of different uh, easy to use processes that allow you to very quickly schedule um, very complicated irrigation sets over a course of a lot of different blocks over a long period of time, very easily, very quickly. Uh, if you're interested in seeing even more of this, I would be more than happy to talk with you afterwards. Now, we don't just have a great uh, website interface, we also have a rock solid app interface that is built off of really the same fundamental ideas that you were seeing over on our website. Again, you're going to see each of your blocks listed as well as what your plan is on each of those blocks each day. Right there, I just circled, you're gonna see exactly what you're planning to do this week versus what was performed versus what we believe is the rough reference that that block should receive in that week. So you're gonna see those three numbers that are on the right side of the screen over on the website. Uh, now they're going to be right next to each one of your blocks. So very quickly, you can see whether or not you're above or below what we think uh, the crop should be doing. And then how exactly that irrigation is causing the crop to respond. Whether if it's positively, you know, more positively than you wanted, you're seeing some saturation or not positively enough, you're actually seeing excess stress then you can go into this planner app and you can make really quick and easy changes by tapping on each of the individual days and scheduling in that additional irrigation so that you can make that effective change right when you need to be. And then no plan like this is going to be complete without your ability to share it amongst the team, whether that is exporting it to a PDF to be printed and hung up, or if it's a quick and easy text message uh, to growers. I know everyone doesn't have automation systems and might not be able to immediately apply them. Uh, in those instances, then we want your irrigators to have the best ability to use this planner tool. And by knowing what you're setting up to do in your blogs each week by sharing your Phytech plan, it makes it really easy for a team, a group of irrigators to know exactly what the schedule should be this week, outlined by each block with what your plan is, whether or not that was performed, if it wasn't performed, where your gap was. Lined up by each individual day and showing you the details about that plan. Now, we've been looking at um, some Phytech that didn't have any automation. So I wanted to give you the visual, um, just like you saw over on Drop Control, what does it actually look like if you're implementing a plan with automation? And that's what you can see on your screen right now. Here, you don't see any gaps in between the plan and what was performed because exactly what you plan is being transferred directly to drop control. And then that's turning on the WiseCon hardware and performing this irrigation event. You can make that schedule then right here in your Phytech planner and then begin to make changes as you see that your schedule is um, more than is necessary, less than is necessary, and very much fine tune what you're wanting to do on any individual day. Phytech with automation is giving you real time data that can be very quickly turned into actions. We're taking data directly from the crops and we're telling you how stressed or unstressed your tree is. But what are you going to do with that information? Now you can take it and turn it directly into action. Seeing excess stress, you can immediately turn on your irrigation system, apply extra water, get those trees out of that stress event. 
Or on the reverse, you see that for the last two days, you've been completely out of stress, maybe even achieving levels of higher saturation. Then maybe the irrigation event today doesn't need to be run and you can delete it. And that way you're going to be saving yourself water and still allowing the tree to perform at its maximum. Now, knowing how they feel, you can supply the trees exactly what they need. And, and now I keep saying trees a lot, but we're not only in the business of helping uh, growers with orchards. We also work on row crops and lots of other agricultural commodities. So we're here to help you make your crops perform their absolute best by telling you exactly what they need. And then with an automation system, you have the ability now to supply them just what they need. Along with working out the schedule, we have someone that's always there to help you. Uh, that's a person like myself. I'm a Phytech customer success manager. So I work with a variety of growers throughout the valley. Personally, I'm based here in Visalia and I work uh, largely with citrus, stone fruit, and almond growers that surround uh, this community here. And I help by coming alongside and figuring out what that right schedule should be. So you have this great Phytech data, you have this awesome automation system, but now you're trying to figure out how to combine them and make the most use of them. That's where your Phytech customer success manager really comes into the gap and helps you even further close that loop by being the person in between that you can discuss with because they've seen a lot of different things happening uh, in lots of different orchards, have experience with lots of different crops, and can help you figure out and fine tune exactly the best way to get your trees or your crop to respond. And then that easy to use planner tool is going to transfer directly into drop, to drop control. So you're able to stay on one platform utilizing the PhiTech data to know how your tree is responding very quickly in that same place, planning your irrigation events for the next day or even the next week, and knowing that they're transferring over to drop control and will be enacted then uh, you know, very quickly or next week, depending upon when you actually made the schedule. All right. Now we're gonna go back a little bit. I've talked a lot about the direct tree data that gives you uh, the information to do the automated changes. Well, where are we actually getting that direct tree data from? Uh, it's coming off of this sensor that you see here on the right side of your screen. That is a dendrometer. Um, we place it right up against the trunk of the tree and it then reports every hour information that we are collecting and then once we've collected about a day's worth of information, the computers run an algorithm based on that specific crop and even in some cases on that specific variety of the crop that produces a color rated plant status. Uh, we made it a very easy color rating system, dark green being saturation, green being no stress, yellow uh, approaching stress, orange is mild stress and red is severe stress. That way, you can open up your PhiTech app in the morning and immediately see all of your blocks laid out with their rated stress colors for the day. And know, okay, I got in this example here, two blocks with severe stress, one with mild stress. That's probably where you should start your day to see what is going on in those fields that the PhiTech data is reporting to you. Definitely, that dendrometer producing the plant data coming off the trees or uh, the stem dendrometer that produces the data coming off the row crops is really the foundation of what we do at PhiTech. But we also know there's a lot more happening in your fields. Um, and sometimes these trees are producing fruit and there might be an issue with the tree that you don't, or an issue with the fruit that you don't quite capture by just looking at the tree. So we are continuing to build out a suite of sensors to help you fully understand everything that's happening in your orchard. That's where these fruit size sensors come in. If you grow anything with larger fruit, avocado, kiwi, citrus, apples, stone fruit, we are out there installing fruit sensors and giving you real-time data on how these fruits are growing. Um, each day, just like with the tree, they're sending you a new value about how the fruit grew from yesterday to today and what its total size is at the moment. Using this, then, you can project forward to see what the likely size is that you'll probably achieve or shoot for a goal of what size you want the fruit to get to by the end of the season. 
This really gives you the ability to even go deeper into managing your orchards and managing your crop. Now you might be seeing your tree looks great, but your fruit doesn't. And then you can go back to that planner, go back to your automation system and make the changes necessary to get the fruit size to where you want it to be. Then water information, critical um, to what's going on. And we believe too, we wanted to take a very specific kind of water information and provide it to you. Our pressure sensors are actually placed in the field with the rest of our sensor suite. So the ones on the trees, uh, the ones on the fruit, right below them will be a sensor attached to your irrigation method that's gonna trigger on and off when it senses water in the line. This is going to give you an extra level of understanding about how your block is being irrigated and how much water is reaching it. Now you can know, depending upon where your Phytex site is in your field, how long it's taking your system to pressurize, how long it's taking water to reach that specific part of your block. And when the water reaches there, what pressure, what PSI are you seeing on an average basis? We're monitoring that PSI and we'll alert you if we detect something that's unusually low or unusually high. Especially when we see that value out in the field, it's really a possibility of concern. And now you can use your Phytech information to see how the crops are doing. And then if you're noticing issues, maybe that's a PSI problem. And we're able to provide you that information for you to then act upon and make the changes necessary, whether it's an additional line flush or maybe changing the irrigation system altogether to better provide the trees exactly what they need. And you're never going to grow alone. We really believe in Phytech about not just giving you data for the sake of data. We want to actually give you context for the data. That's why we produce the plant status color. We're not just collecting information off of the tree and then giving you these massive spreadsheets or these big long graphs of the information that we collected. We are interpreting it each day to let you know that this data means that your crop is this level of stress. But we wanna take it the next step too. We are looking at so many different crops all around the world and so, the Phytech system also has in it a growth reference line that will show you exactly where your crop falls on average with everything else of the same variety, age, and commodity type, giving you further context to understand how your tree is performing. And again, the customer success manager is a huge part of this at Phytech. We come in and help you even further understand this data more, getting a good basis so that you can really use it to implement actionable change. You have the data. The data is contextualized for you. Then the next step is really important that you're able to make actionable change in that orchard, whether it's reducing your sets, increasing your sets, changing the length, whatever it is, we're here to help you make those changes and implement them to see the best performance possible. The Phytech difference really starts with plant-based farming. We are taking this data straight from the crop. You're getting information that previously you just kind of had to eyeball by looking at the tree and you know, it looks good. Well, now you don't have to guess that it looks good. You can know that it is good. This information has been well scientifically validated, uh, corresponding incredibly closely with probably one of the most uh, esteemed irrigation uh, management tools, the pressure bomb. And then every single day, we are conducting a massive experiment inside Phytech. We are watching hundreds of thousands of crops and plots around the world in multiple different countries, seeing how almonds in Australia respond differently from almonds in the United States, from almonds in Europe, from almonds in Israel, getting this sort of information back and continuing to learn and to grow from it, to make the data we're providing you better and better. We want you also to access that data in a really easy to use interface on both the website and our mobile applications. So you can take the information we're providing and be able to very quickly understand what it's telling you 
and make the changes possible in your orchard. The customer success team is there to really help make that a reality by using that super simple interface and this plant-based data to give you a really good understanding of what's happening in your orchard. Because we know there's gonna be questions. This is a new way of farming and we want to be able to help bring you success. We also have a platform of affordability. We function on a subscription model. Uh, the idea being in technology, we're constantly changing. You can look at your phone right now, and I bet you've bought a new one within the last couple of years and probably are looking to buy another new one a few years from now. That's because technology is always changing. We're always innovating, we're getting better. We don't want you to be stuck with outdated old hardware or old technology. We don't wanna to come to a grower five years from now and tell him everything is garbage, he needs to buy all new. You work with us as a subscriber. And so when we come up, as we continue to innovate with new forms of hardware that give you better, more reliable, more efficient data, we'll just roll it out into your fields. No need to worry or to ask about it. And we continue to build a growing database that gets more and more and more accurate. We also understand that at this point, we still don't know everything. We might never know everything. We're always here to learn and continually to improve, to make our system better and better, tighter and more efficient, more optimized every single day. All right, thank you very much. I'm gonna switch back over and we can get the Q&A started. Perfect. All right. All right, so we have a few questions in the Q&A. All right, so the first one here, can you give examples of changing a grower from low frequency, one per week, one irrigation per week, versus every day to perhaps several times a day? Um, I'm not sure if you're asking for like a specific person that changed that or if what happens when that change occurs. So I'm gonna go with the second part. Uh, feel free to drop something in if you were really wanting to hear a little bit more specific. So typically what we've seen a lot, um, I actually come from a farming background here in the Central Valley. So I'm very familiar with the, the kind of standard practice, turn your pumps on Saturday morning, turn them off Monday morning, maybe Sunday morning if you're feeling really involved. So you're running a typical 24 hour to 48 hour set. Very consistently in Phytech, when you irrigate like that, we see the same trend. You look great at the very beginning. That first day, it's completely green. It looks beautiful. It probably even looks beautiful for the next one, two, even three days. Then we start to see a downward trend. We start to see warnings of stress, then mild stress, finally severe stress. What you end up doing is applying mild levels or even severe levels of stress to your crop every single week when you irrigate like that. Switching to it, even like I tell my clients, let's first, if you can't do every day, let's do two 12 hour sets, three eight hour sets. We can start small. Making those small changes really give your block less time to enter into severe levels of stress because you're applying more water right when the tree needs it and especially keeping it in the critical upper parts of the root zone. Now, of course, this doesn't fit for every single block and every single farmer. At Phytech, we're really big on the individual. We think each individual block has its own story to tell, and we want to figure out the best method to care for that individual block. But in general, the consistent, shorter, free, or shorter duration, more frequent sets always seems to improve. Awesome. Thank you. I know from a WiseCom perspective, the um, ROI case that I was talking about in the presentation, um, Tom Rogers, he switched to pulse irrigating when he lost that well in the beginning of summer and his yield increased five to 10% and he saved 30% water. So just like Joseph said, um, applying that water right when you need it at short and shorter frequencies can definitely make all the difference. Um, all right, another question. Do your plant soil sensors trigger stop start irrigation times or is it all based on time? So. Oh, I think at the moment we don't have a combined passive system. So if you see stress inside Phytech, 
for example, that's not going to immediately trigger an irrigation for tomorrow that will turn on your WiseCon system. Uh, the system isn't at that point yet. Um, and to be honest, I've heard a lot of growers that don't really want a system like that at this moment. They want to be able to make the decisions themselves. And so at the moment, I'm I don't know uh, exactly from the WiseCon side, I'll let Sage answer that. But from the FITEC side, we still have developed a system that you're required to see the change and then go in and schedule. But I mean, going onto your computer, opening it up and typing a few times the schedule and irrigation is sure a lot different than driving to your field, turning on your pump, opening your valve, doing all that. So we have made it a lot simpler to do that change, but at the moment we're not functioning on a passive system. Right. So just like Joseph said, um, WiseCon or drop control currently doesn't have an alarm that would turn on an irrigation or turn off based off of soil moisture. Um, however, we can set an alert for you. So it can let you know based off those soil sensors if you're running a little bit dry past your maximum or minimum thresholds. And it will let you know right away, hey, you told me to uh, let you know to turn on irrigation when you're running a little bit dry. Here's your reminder. And just like Joseph said as well, a lot easier than driving to the ranch. You can do everything remote. Um, so that's one benefit, but yeah, still in the works on creating some kind of automatic, um, turn on, turn off situation, but yeah. we do have, um, some kind of uh, alert situation happening already. All right. How much variability would there be between two fruit sensors on the same tree or perhaps the same orchard? Um, it depends on the install specifically. So we've done a lot of work in training our technicians and developing a pretty consistent practice that there shouldn't be a lot of variability. Um, what we typically like to do in most instances is the technician will be out there with a pair of fruit calipers and they'll measure the tree. So they will, or not the tree itself, the fruit on the tree to be able to see, well, what is an average for this tree? And, you know, okay, so the average is 35 millimeters. Then they'll select a piece that's 35 millimeters to measure. Uh, and then we will also have technicians out in those fields fairly routinely for other kinds of uh, maintenance, upkeep, things like that. Uh, when those um, events occur, that the technicians are out there, they also will then reassess the fruit sensors. You know, maybe that piece that was 35 millimeters two weeks ago, actually it was a dud and it stopped growing. So then they need to switch it to a new piece of the right size. So we're constantly monitoring that on our end to see if we can make sure to catch issues with the fruit sensors and have there be a, as little variability as possible. Um, and we're wanting to specifically to capture the information that you're wanting. Um, so if you maybe want to know what's the biggest piece of fruit on those trees, well then we'll tell the technicians, please find the largest piece of fruit and install the sensors on those or vice versa, the smallest. We are also wanting to provide you with the data that you're wanting to see, but in general, we try to install on an average piece for each tree. Awesome. All right. Another question. So uh, one of our attendees has a neighbor with Phytech and they said that they have three dendrometers per site. What is the purpose of having three? Really, there's two different things with the um, the three sensors per location. Uh, one, from an operation standpoint, we want backups. So these sensors are still on trees outside uh, and people are in these orchards, equipment's in these orchards, animals are in these orchards. So we will have moments where, you know, a coyote was eating your irrigation line and he kicked the sensor down. So the nice thing about having three is if you lose one, you're still getting two good data points coming out of that orchard. And that gives our operations team a little bit of lead time to be able to get out and reset that third sensor. So your other two will continue reporting and continue providing you good data. Uh, the second reason being is we're looking to get a good average for your block. And that happens when we're looking at not just one data point, but at least three data points. Um, we even have a future goal at Phytech as we continue to innovate, helping to make our sensors uh, smaller and more accurate of even increasing the number to provide you with further data points coming out of the same field so that you can really see how there's a consistent trend happening, that it's not just one tree is doing this, but you can even see the lineup of data coming off of three individual Phytech sensors um, doing all the same thing. It's very powerful for you to be able to notice that and then make the change off of that uh, information. Oh, Sage, I believe you muted yourself. 
Thank you. Yeah, All right. Uh, I'm not sure if you would answer this in your presentation, but what crops do you have installed uh, that are using Phytech? It's a lot easier to say the crops we don't have installed using Phytech. Um, pretty much we can work with most anything. Um, there's only a handful I'm having trouble thinking of it. I, I know the R&D team has said they have trouble sometimes with strawberries, uh, but in general, here in California, we're on every type of tree from uh, walnuts, pistachios, hazelnuts, pecans, all the nut families, almonds, peaches, nectarines, all the stone fruits, all the citrus, uh, getting down into the berries like blueberries, um, uh, small row crops like potatoes, tomatoes. Um, our Midwest branch, I'm speaking here from California, um, but I know our Midwest branch, they pretty much exclusively do row crops, things like, uh, like corn, soybean, cotton, soy drum. Up north in the PNW, they do apples, cherries, more blueberries, things like that. Um, we function on pretty much all crops. We will use a couple different sensors to be able to monitor a tree trunk versus, you know, the small stem of uh, a cotton plant. Those are certainly a different sensor. This is an order of magnitude smaller, um, but we still can sense the change. And it's the same basic concept uh, where the tree is experiencing a fluctuation that we can then measure and report to you. I said tree. The crop is experiencing a fluctuation. As you can see, I work a lot with trees being here in Visaya. Definitely. All right. Uh, last one here. Um, it's maybe one for each of us, but what does your data show to justify multiple sets within the same day? Hmm. Would you like to start first? Yeah. So I know from a Wisecom perspective, um, this is kind of just uh, not a really a trial and error, but in some operations, we might have to try multiple sets, sometimes maybe just two sets a day, maybe sometimes up to five. I'm um, just kind of seeing what works for your crop. And this is kind of just seeing throughout a season, um, a viewing soil moisture. So seeing how much uh, moisture that your soil is retaining using those smaller multiple sets a day, uh, making sure you're staying within your threshold and that your plants are happy. Um, and then also kind of just seeing your yield at the end of the day. So seeing your yield at the end of the season, like we talked about um, Tom using pulse irrigation and he increased his yield by 10%. Um, so kind of just playing around with that and seeing you know, what works for your crop. Um, but I know that from most cases I've seen with using those uh, smaller multiple sets a day, um, the yield almost always was increasing um, to some degree. Nope, definitely. And um, with Phytech, I would say that's one of the things that's really great about our technology is we can kind of take it the next step because so often you're having to base your information on uh, your crop, your harvest. So, okay, my harvest is great. Clearly my irrigation strategy was spot on. Um, with Phytech, you can see, okay, I irrigated this way today. The tree didn't perform well. It, it was stressed. So you need a change then. And I haven't seen... Uh, I see plenty of instances where, you know, you irrigate every single day. So there's not a lot, but there are growers in California doing that strategy. And depending upon the situation, some of them still aren't performing optimally. Um, those are when we would come in and recommend like, okay, so you're putting on the right amount of water. We also think your basic practice of irrigating every day is the right way to irrigate. You still are seeing stress. Let's go to the next level. Let's try pulse irrigation. Um, especially we found during periods of excessive heat, uh, like the heat wave last week, I had several colleagues uh, really push some clients that that was the moment for them to begin pulse irrigating. Some clients doing even a, a three hours on, one hour off, three hours on schedules like that, utilizing a WiseCon automation system uh, to truly be able to keep the tree out of stress entirely uh, during what was a period of quite excessive heat last week. And I know they're prepping to do it again as we go into this next heat wave end of next week. Awesome. All right, well, that's just about all the time we have. Um, I think we answered almost every question. Um, if not, I'll go ahead and contact um, you guys directly if you had a question that we didn't get to. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and drop my info in the chat for uh, contact purposes. If you need to contact me, uh, I don't know, Joseph, you wanna do that as well? Um, I will, yeah. Well, feel, feel free to contact myself or Joseph with any questions um, you may think of after the webinar. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. This was recorded, so it's going to um, be posted on YouTube here anytime. Then all the attendees will get a email letting you know that it was um, put up on uh, our social. All right. Well, thank you. Awesome. For Sage, thank you for hosting us. Thank you for WiseCon for bringing us in here to talk. Uh, we really appreciate it.
Thank you. Of course. Thank you, Joseph. And everyone have a great day. Have a good weekend.